I was actually in um, Coco's right the other day, as I mentioned prior, because I went to go see Dixon, my man Dixon play, Coco, Dixon, Coco, Dixon. And as you guys have known, I've been speaking about it often, talking about how they did a big refurb over there and they spent like, I think, 70 million or something to get it all spruced up and stuff, according to this article here from the Evening Standard. And I have to be honest, having spent some time in there, I don't know where that money went. And I'm starting to question whether or not all these refurbishments, these flipping upgrades that they do to these places and the money they, they, they raise for them and whatnot and spend for it, if this is not all some sort of big scam and where the money ends up allegedly, supposedly, this is rumours I'm talking about, it's not based on any kind of fact, but I wonder if this money just ends up in people's back pockets or goes to pay for, you know, lavish flipping end of year celebrations or whatever else it may be because I didn't see any of this 70 million that they spent on the flipping unveiling or launching of flipping Coco in the slightest. So I want to quickly check over this article and see where that money went to. So this is the following. It's been a tough challenge in two years, said the CEO, Oli Bengo. So on to be the last stretch and looking forward to launching next spring is obviously a great moment for my team and everyone at Coco. We're now just really excited to bring back Coco back. Some 70 million has been pumped into the redevelopment, which has enabled four story upwards extension of the great touristic theatre as well as expansion into two adjacent buildings a former piano factory dating back to 1800s and the old Hope and Archer pub which counted as Charles Dickinson's um, among its local patrons so essentially they raised it up a few levels they added a rooftop bar they extended it in the width and it cost 70 million as a revamp it's no wonder when I was in there actually in there to see Dixon play I know it's absolutely no difference to the times I've been there prior to see Jenny Aiko, to see Best Coast, and maybe some other people along the time. It didn't seem that much different to me. Over legit, it didn't seem that much different to me. And I sat there wondering to myself, hmm, I wonder if some of this money goes in people's back pockets. But hey, it doesn't matter. Who cares? On to the Dixon stuff. So Dixon was playing at uh, Coco's. And I have to be honest, number one, I think I came away with the realization that I might have to give Dixon a break. As much as I love him and I enjoy his DJ sets and I love him as an artist and a DJ and his approaches to it and his philosophy around it and the world that he's created with the inner visions and his labels and he's lost in the moments parties and the experience and how tactile he is behind the decks and his style and whatnot. All the stuff is amazing but sonically in terms of the music that he plays in my opinion it's as drab and as repetitive as like some of these Ama Piano DJs out there. And, you know, nowadays, especially Amma Piano is good as, you know, it's kind of reached critical mass. People are becoming very rich and famous off of it very quickly. And loads of people are coming in and just kind of making the most low effort, basic bottom feeder type music in that kind of realm. And it isn't really hitting anymore. And it's all starting to sound the same. It's kind of going through the same sort of thing that happened to Afrobeats before it kind of transitioned into Afropop and got a little bit interesting and fresh again. It's kind of getting repetitive. And I have to be honest, the first few minutes that we spent seeing Dixon play, especially when he's warming up, because, you know, when Dixon's playing all night sets, he has this philosophy or this principle that he has, you know, about those long sets where he likes to kind of, quote unquote, reset the room. So he'll play something somewhat dreary, somewhat slow, somewhat you know, calm and calming um, that has no reflection of what's going to happen later to kind of reset the room and kind of get it all started and slow down and relax and obviously get people to pay attention and to be in the moment, blah, 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 and then slowly ramp it up as he's kind of progressing through the night. But unfortunately, that star really did kind of affect me negatively and I immediately started to get bored, immediately. And it's been a long time since I got to a club and I've been bored. But then I realised, actually, when I was in there, I was realised, I was thinking to myself, I think Dixon might be the only DJ outside of maybe DJ Harvey who I've seen multiple times. Like, and I got, and maybe again, outside DJ Harvey, maybe outside the arm and stuff, but there's not many DJs who I like, who I appreciate and who I love where I've seen them play multiple times back to back. That's okay. That's the major, sorry, I just remembered. That's the major thing. It's not that I've not seen him or not seen others a lot. It's that I see Dixon consecutively. And I think that's the main issue. And for his style of music that he plays, which you describe it as like atmospheric house, FIFA house, deep house, um, house just in general, it's a very particular kind of sound. And that particular kind of sound, in my opinion, just isn't that interesting after a long period of time it just sounds a bit repetitive so after the intro after the first couple of hours I was already bored and not really in the mood but the venue itself really kind of captivates you and kind of brings you 
back into the moment weirdly enough as distracting as it is being a theater it somehow keeps centering you because of how awe-inspiring it looks and as a arena and as a place to host dj sets i think it's probably one of the best in terms of the kind of um, places that aren't necessarily quintessential nightclubs, I think they transformed it really well. I think one thing they did really well there, actually to pick up the Coco, once they kind of sorted it out, is that obviously just imagine like a regular theatre. You know, some people have got the picture of it here on the screen. But if you imagine what a regular theatre kind of looks like, usually on the stage, what they will do in these sort of arenas if they had DJs, is they'll normally put the decks right here at the back where the drums would be if a band was playing. And for me, in my opinion, I always felt like that kind of creates a little bit of separation and it kind of puts DJ too far back in, in on the stage and you don't really feel connected in some way. But whoever made the decisions to do this, I think is really genius in that what they did is that they brought the deck further towards the front of the stage like the well yeah the front the edge of the stage and then what that ended up doing is that freeing up the room behind dixon and they made that room behind him and they kind of cornered it off and put a gate in front of it and made that the vip quote-unquote area so if you wanted to pay extra money and want to be in the booth kind of style you could stand behind dixon and kind of you know smell him and touch him from there but also give him the space to play and i felt like in that auditorium it kind of created a real nice link through the back of the room all the way to the front of the room like from one side to the other it kind of made us all feel like one um, and even i think if you look at some people's pictures i'm sure people who have pictures who stood to the, at the back like underneath where the sound kind of people are and lighting people are and i'm sure those pictures you could see like a wave of people going from the back of the room all the way onto the front of the stage so i think all that stuff worked really really well in that regard but like i said after you know getting all giddy about the flipping environment and the interior and how cool and amazing it looked after a while i just got bored i just got legitly bored of kind of being in there for a while and if anything i kind of lasted longer than i expected because i think i was legitimately thinking of leaving at that one but you know we already uh, we we luckily got there really early because i'll take it for like you know before eleven thirty. so getting there really early kind of helped to kind of you know feel like you didn't waste your money and you kind of got some of your money's worth so stay there until like free i did anyway and ended up getting the uber back home because i just you know wasn't really feeling it too tough another thing that i really liked about it is like twofold liked and didn't like is that the crowd was a lot more varied and diverse and in terms of age ranges than usual dicks and nights because this event was um promoted and kind of put out there by coco so they kind of i guess in-house team or whoever's managing their bookings did this and it wasn't something that they did in conjunction with labyrinth who usually are kind of you know running some of the innovation uk type of events and as good as labyrinth are and as great at what they've done over the last few years and stuff we've been to a few of their events and they've been really really fun from gerd jansen to dixon um, to tricks and stuff they really do a good job of kind of programming put those events together and you know for me personally i kind of got bored of that approach and that crowd a bit after a while it's a very young um the approach is you know a certain way that sometimes the, the, the venues that they choose aren't really for me and my liking the production can be a little bit improved but i felt like someone else beginning to give it a chance to present Dixon in the UK kind of spruced up a little bit offer something interesting and new and I think that's probably why it sold out and again this is one of the only events I've been to this year or I've been to in the last 18 months that felt like it was generally sold out because in nightlife in I guess it's probably the same thing in flipping mu in music just overall not just dance music but there is definitely a big problem and issue with people lying about ticket sales and kind of embellishing the truth and making it seem like something sold out when it isn't sold out but this was the only one that actually was because weeks and sometimes days before the event there was no tickets popping up on the RA resale queue every ticket that was being listed on ticket swap was being snapped up the second it was made available people were begging and pleading for tickets on Facebook groups all over the place um you know crate diggers or whatever they called them um, those guys will probably to be able to tell you more about that whole situation and then when we got there you could clearly see there's a lot of demand for it and i think i heard something about oh they were selling tickets at the door for like a 100 pounds to get in also so clearly there was a big demand for this event and people were really happy with it so it was good to see a very very varied and diverse age group crowd it was also good to see a lot of girls in there just from just a, a visual point of view i think it's nice in that approach and it's also interesting that dixon has that appeal you know 
I don't know, maybe girls find him hot anyway, but he's an older dude in general and he, he doesn't really carry himself as a party boy. So to see him be able to attract such like cool, you know, hip, hot looking girls was quite interesting to see. But the other thing that was a little bit concerning was the fact that everyone was really off their face. <laughs> everyone was absolutely yacked off their face. And this is probably one of the only events, maybe it happens a lot at gigs, so I don't go to a lot of live music gigs as much as I probably should do. I go to a lot of nightclubs and stuff. I don't go to see a lot of bands and musicians play. So this is a thing that actually does happen, but this is probably one of the biggest, this is probably one of the, the most times I've ever seen people take bumps on the dance floor or on the on the, on the flipping you know main floor or whatever. People taking bumps every single, every time I looked around, you see somebody crouching down and having a quick line, a quick bump or something, because obviously the toilets were absolutely crazy, packed and busy. Oh, the toilets looked impressive actually. That's maybe that's where the 70 million went. If I'm wondering where that 70 million went, it might went to the toilets. The toilets were quite nice, but they're always packed. So I saw many people on the dance floor doing that. And obviously that added to the added to the environment, added to the atmosphere. People were geeked, people were hyped. But you know, they were a little bit too geeked and hyped for me, so I had to leave and bounce. And you know, after a while I kind of got bored. But that was pretty much decent. I enjoyed going to Camden. I don't really go to North London too often. And that was pretty decent to kind of check it out. And I'm going to play here a quick clip that features Dixon playing. And you can see what it kind of looked like on the inside. This is courtesy of Coco Electronic, the Instagram account that features all their stuff they do in terms of DJ nights over there. So the people that I bumped into over there that kind of said hi and whatnot, that was nice of you. I think one particular guy, my name was Tom Tim, I think, or something. Tim or Tom, you know who you are if you're listening. So big up you um, for saying hi and stuff. So that's always nice to see when you're in these public spaces and whatnot. So big up everybody that was in there. 